On Friday the 3rd of December, the Pentagon unveiled its first strategic bomber in over 30 years, the B-21 Raider. The previous generation of B-2 Spirit was publicly displayed for the first time in November 1988. Basically, every aspect of the B-21 Raider is highly classified. But in a tightly controlled unveiling, the new strategic plane was briefly shown to the public. In fact, the location is the exact same place the original B-2 was publicly unveiled, the United States Air Force Plants 42 in Palmdale, California. The B-21 is expected to enter service around 2027, expecting to complement and eventually replace the B-2 as the US Air Force's long-range intercontinental stealth bomber able to deliver both conventional and thermal nuclear weapons. It is touted as the world's first sixth-generation combat aircraft. The B-21 Raider took its name from the 1942 Doolittle Raid over Tokyo. One of the key characteristics of the B-21 is VLO, or Very Low Observable Technology which it is anticipated will allow the B-21 to penetrate even the most sophisticated air defense systems without being detected. It can then drop precision ammunition and presumably get out in one piece. The external appearance of the B-21 closely resembles the B-2 spirit, presumably due to the need to achieve the geometry necessary for stealth requirements. But defense analysts have pointed out there will be other new stealth technologies, including materials used in the coating of the B-21 that will make the plane even harder to detect, new ways to control electronic emissions so the bomber could spoof adversary radars and disguise itself as another object, and the use of new propulsion technologies. The original B-2 was intended for either precision strikes or nuclear strike missions deep inside hostile airspace, making use of its stealthy capabilities to avoid detection and interception throughout missions. The B-2 makes use of the Joint Direct Attack munitions, which are guided by inertial navigation systems coupled to the Global Positioning Satellite. These were unguided bombs that were transformed into precision-guided munitions through a simple guidance kit. The tactical role of the B-21 Raider will most likely be similar to that of the B-2, although the weapons used cannot be anticipated at this point. In fact, the manufacturer, Northrop Grumman, claimed in a fact sheet that new manufacturing techniques and materials will ensure the B-21 will defeat the anti-access area denial systems it will face. The bomber is part of the Pentagon's effort to modernize all three legs of its nuclear triad, which includes intercontinental ballistic missiles and submarine-launched nuclear warheads as its shift from fighting wars in the Middle East, while to fighting wars against elder nuclear powers, China and Russia. So everyone will have nukes, and the B-21 will be one of the ways to deliver the US nukes. The US has been making a lot of noise over the Chinese nuclear arsenal in recent years. Six B-21 Raiders are in production. The Air Force plans to build over 100 that can deploy either nuclear weapons or conventional bombs and can be used with or without a human crew. One thing that struck me was just how incredibly expensive the B-21 is. It is just incredible. Included in the information to the public are estimated per unit's cost, which runs to well above 700 million US dollars in fiscal year 2022. To put things in perspective, three B-21 bombers equates to the cost of buying more than two dozen F-35 fighters, an Arleigh Burke destroyer, or a Virginia-class nuclear attack submarine. This is not even accounting for the very possible cost escalation, at least in the near future, because that is how things generally are in the American military-industrial complex. 
By the way, inflation has been sky high for the past year. And we may very well see the nominal price tag of a B21 to increase going forward. That said, these are only rough estimates, and the exact cost is unavailable at this point. To be fair, per unit costs generally are high at an early stage of development, especially for research-intensive items like a stealth bomber. This is because the astronomical amount that is the project cost is spread across a smaller number of units. Once the US Air Force begins to purchase more and more of these planes, economies of scale will kick in, and the fixed cost components of the project will be spread across a larger number of units, which in turn reduces the per unit cost. This is just economics. I hope it makes sense. This has been the case with what was the highly expensive F-35 fighter program. That said, because the B-31 is a big ticket item, a lot fewer units will be acquired, so the economies of scale could be limited. We will see. The fact that the actual price is not publicly available troubles government watchdogs. It might be a big challenge to do normal analysis. It's easy to say that the B-21 is still on schedule in a pre-flight stage. It's only when one of these programs goes into the actual testing phase that real problems are discovered. And so that's the point when schedules really start to slip and cost really starts to rise. There has been digital testing done in a virtual environment. But that is, of course, not the same thing as a real-world test. Anyway, if the very low observable technology works as intended, the B-21 can possess the potential to launch strikes at naval targets in port. In an age of satellites and over-the-horizon radars, a surprise naval strike against fleets stationed in ports involving long distances has long been considered very difficult. Due to the advancements in surveillance, VLO bombers like the B-21 can well make this viable again. Still, the project is still underway. Its outlook is far from certain, and the price tag is astronomical. What do you think? Is the B-21 the new wonder weapon, or a gigantic sink for taxpayers' money, or both? Let me know in the comments below. I got to say, I was in two minds about whether to talk about the B-21. This channel is mainly about modern warships, but clearly there is a lot of interest in this plane. So here we are. It might be another 30 years before we get to look at the next one. See you next time.